solid the city of Barcelona with constructions which have embarrassed all those who place their confidence in him. To crown his noble career, he has got into his head the idea of building a church whose extravagant dimensions are explained by his modest desire to install there the entire Holy Family. What is really stupefying is that people who cannot be ignorant of the magnificent traditions of their country are about to entrust the house of God to an eccentric. The fact is, he hasn't the remotest idea of the most elementary rules of architecture. You have only to look at the way he tortures supporting columns to realize that he is, in my opinion, ignoring all that men have painfully established in the past. What are we to think of those who show wild enthusiasm about a few absurdities which scarcely deserve a mention in a list of oddities? which seems to be essential, and that virtue is discretion. But alas, Gaudí is hardly ever discreet, and thus nearly always fails. The more extravagant he becomes, the greater are his failures. The works of Antonio Gaudí, above all the great cathedral, seem to me to represent a mistake made by a genius, which future architects of the Sagrada Familia will have to remedy. In those awful combinations of stone and wood or iron, the stone is humiliated and architecture loses its unity. Then his work is ruined. Good afternoon, Senor Gaudí. Senor Gaudí, I am Miguel Ruiz Ortega. Ah, Miguel. You are the young man from Madrid who wanted to see me. Yes, Senor. No, to see my works, not me. They are more important. But come on, come on. I remember when I was your age, I too was just beginning my studies. Tell me, Miguel, are you studying art as well as architecture? No, only architecture, Senor Gaudí. You must call me Don Antonio. Do you know what an architect is? An architect is someone who can see the nature of things before they exist. Someone who knows how to put in order and arrange things in a form that's three-dimensional. But with feeling. Feeling is life. Whenever we go wrong, it's because of the head. And the head is only an instrument of control. 
Good day, Don Antonio. Good day, Anna. Soup. These women with this mania of theirs for soup. Who always say, have a little more. They are the enemies of a good long life because meat and stew attack the kidneys the same as wine attacks the liver. I hope that this fruit hasn't been chilled, Anna. You know how they lose their flavor. No, senor. Good, good. I think I should be leaving, Don Antonio. If you like, tomorrow morning, we can pay a long visit here in the Quell Park. You'll find it interesting. I look forward to it. I'm extremely grateful to have this opportunity of getting to know you. The only way of getting to know people is by spending their money. And we architects, we always spend other people's money. Good afternoon, Don Antonio. purchased this property. It seemed the ideal place because of its perfect location. Here on the slopes of this bare mountain, I wanted to create a garden village. It was to be a suburb entirely on its own, to be totally independent. Between these columns, I wanted the marketplace. It would sell everything, food, clothing, even toys for the children. And above this ceiling, I wanted a big square for the children to play in. And for the people to dance in at fiesta time. I used to get pieces of broken tile they were going to throw out of the factory to get a great variety of color. Because nothing in nature is all one color. No plant or rock, animal or earth, is all one color. All is contrast.
Haven't you noticed that when a man leans on a cane, he inclines it at an angle? Now, these columns are like stone canes. Our problem was to find the right degree of inclination. The right degree depends on the amount of work each column has to do. Each one has to carry its own load. Vertical columns are bogus. They need crutches to support them. You won't find them anywhere in nature. Nature is God's architecture. My columns don't need support. But Don Antonio, why has the work been stopped? What you see here now is the work of 14 years. Then the Count of Guell died. As you know, it was his faith, his great generosity, which made my work possible. Unfinished. It's all unfinished. The first geometry is that of the Egyptian pyramid. Its section is the right angle triangle of measurements three feet five, which faces over the vertical. not only the circle, but also the hyperbola and the parabola. This is the crypt that uh, was to be the first of a series of cathedrals. An architect should not be vague. Geometry is his language. With geometry, he must find the right form for each use with the exact shape to give it its character. It's only the engineer who uses one form for everything. The architect is distinguished from the structural engineer by virtue of making the construction superior spiritually or destined for divinity, as it were. Also partaking of this superiority is the house or construction destined for man, which, to be complete, has to have a place dedicated to God. And this is not new with Christianity, since all pagan peoples have places dedicated to their gods. I felt a need to create a new setting for the church, something more natural, without the formality of straight lines. And so I decided on this, the parabolic arch. See how it unites and links everything together. It is the Father. It is supreme. St. Peter's Church in Rome and the Sistine Chapel are nothing more than the work of decorators, not architects. Thank you. 
Light is the mother of all visual art, contrast and color. Color and light, but always contrast. Now, this building is not mine. It was already built when I was asked to change its appearance. I used architects who were at the same time artists. And together, we tried to combine rhythm and color, both inside The painter interprets an object through color. The sculptor through shape. But the architect, he must create the object itself. My first idea was to make a double ramp to allow people to keep their motor cars in the basement of the building. But the ramp took up too much space. As for the building itself, I made use of clean geometric lines. Lines that are free, free from ornamentation. Ornamentation is to architecture what meter and rhyme are to poetry. You'll see what I mean. Roofs have always interested me. Here you have only the sky behind you. All these shapes and forms that you can see around you are something more than just ornaments. They have a practical use. They release air and smoke. They help the building to breathe. I have a deep understanding of space because I come from a long line of coppersmiths and of sailors. And sailors too are people of space, as also are coppersmiths. Because before they can fashion their metal, they have to visualize the space. All of these ancestors of mine shaped me. You see, the ability to visualize things in space is something not everyone can possess.
Well, a building is only what it needs is this character of dignity, which is the same thing. Ornamentation has been, is, will be polymoral. Nature does not present us with any object of polymoral. Totally new with respect to color. Not in vegetation, not in geology, not in topography, not in This is the Great Route, the Mediterranean. The light of the Mediterranean possesses great harmony because it falls neither horizontally nor vertically, but at an angle of 45 degrees. Now, in northern countries, they have a sad horizontal light. And in the tropics, a harsh, severe light, which is vertical. And it is for this reason that I believe that architecture is Mediterranean. And because of this, I think we are first cousins to the Greeks and to the Italians. And you will remember that Don Quixote only recovers his reason after reaching the shores of the Mediterranean. But observe that he refused to go on living after he recovered his sanity. The more scientific a man, the more useless he is. Science is analysis, and analysis is death. Since a dissection is always carried out on things which are dead. Science is like some immense block of metal, immovable, and you must realize it is only art can transform it and make it available to everyone. Don Antonio. What is it, Eduardo? There have been criticisms about your designs for the Sagrada Familia. The critics think that... Um, that I am a revolutionary. Well, the majority of critics are artists that are frustrated. They lack talent or courage. You listen to them and you're lost. I am no revolutionary. I am a traditionalist. Originally, this church was not my project. When I was commissioned to continue construction, I modified as far as possible the project they'd initiated, adopting ideas I'd had during my days as a student. Do you know what was my inspiration? There, through that window, a tree. The trunk sustains the branches and leaves without other elements of support. Whoever saw a tree with buttresses? Everything in balance, everything in harmony, because it goes back to the origin of things. Understanding this, you will also understand that originality is a return to the origin. This you will never learn in school. There you will learn only discipline and analysis and plenty of text. People who want everything explained by books are like people who go to a chemist and ask him, give me something to take with my breakfast and something else to take with my supper.
man who has to build. To make things should never criticize the works of others or praise his own. There is nothing unusable, nothing that can't be used. Antonio, could you spare a moment? Of course, Pepe. Well, what is your trouble? Well, I can't solve the problem of the design of this seat. I see. Can we have a look? Well, I can't get the right shape to fit this bench of yours here. That plaster, is it still wet? Yes, it's still soft. Good. Now take some and pour it right here until it's level with the back. That is it. Now, let your trousers fall down and sit in the plaster. You will find that once it is hardened, you will have the exact form of a seat. Pedro. Yep. Please, in Don Antonio. Oh, you're just round there. Right, thanks. Don Antonio, may I speak with you for a moment? I, I finished the rose. No, no, that is not what I wanted. Where is the style? Where is the personality? It says nothing about the artist who did it. Nothing, nothing. Now just look, for example, here. More angular in the cutting to bring out the pure design of the flower. Give it your signature, your style. You may have noticed the statues on the front of this church. I have adopted a simple method for obtaining the true form of the body. That which is taken from the skeleton. You know that the skeleton of the male differs in proportions from that of the female. The question is to see the body from various angles, but from one position fixed. I used a system of mirrors to observe the form in various positions and then took photographs of all the angles from right there, from where you're standing now. It is the skeleton which controls the movement through a series of small levers which act on the muscles as though they were motors. One moment, please. 
Good afternoon, Father. Good afternoon, Don Antonio. I took the liberty of bringing along these very kind people who have come from America. They are very eager to see the Sagrada Familia. Welcome to our Cathedral of the Poor. If I can be of any help. These four towers will rise to a height of 550 feet. There will be 12 towers eventually, each one representing an apostle. The design of the towers I took from the stars themselves. What I mean is that stars move in an orbit that is the path of their equilibrium. Therefore, they rotate on themselves in a manner that makes their movement helicoidal. These columns of the Sagrada Familia follow a bundle of forces that is their balance. They are generated by a star-shaped section that rotates as it slides upwards. This also occurs in the trunks of trees. The theory is quite an old one. Signor Gaudi, what do you think it will cost when it's all finished? I don't know. I won't be here by then, so I cannot tell you but it will cost much in sacrifice. This church must be enriched by sacrifice. If it is not, it will never be completed. But this sacrifice you speak of, will it mean suffering? Everyone has to suffer. The only ones who do not suffer are the dead. A man who doesn't want to suffer wants to die. I have no hopes to finish my church. Not unless God decides to give me perpetual life. No. I don't plan to finish it. I leave that to future architects. I want to build a church where everyone will find something of his own. The peasants, the animals of the farm. The scientists, the stars and their paths. The holy men, the life of Jesus. Antonio, I am most grateful to you for letting me have not only your time, but your ideas. Ideas. I've never had very much time for ideas, as I am always working. What are your future projects? You ask me about things which I do not know. Things which have no concrete form. You must forgive my shortcomings, like everything human. I'm incomplete. Well, until the next time we meet, Miguel. <laughs> 